Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about balmy lippies. These balm lipstick hybrids, I cannot get enough. These sheer shiny formulas that will glow to the lips with some balmy, hydrating, moisturizing qualities. I live for these types of products. So today I thought I'd give you a bit of a rundown on some of my favorites, the differences between them, the pros and cons, and which ultimately I think is the best of the best of these types of lip formulas. I wear these non-stop in spring and summer. It's pretty much all I wear. I wear them all year round, but especially spring and summer, I feel like they're just, they just come into their own. They just nail it in the warm weather, you know, a sheer, shiny, comfortable, glossy, plump, juicy looking lip, get out of town. That's just what I'm all about in the summery, sunny months. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? So first up, let's talk about the NARS Afterglow. So first up, let's talk about the NARS Afterglows. These are like what I think of as like a classic tinted lip balm. They have very little colour. They're very much like a sheer, I mean, can you even see that? I doubt it. That's probably better. You can see that very minimal, very much like just a hint of something. These are like perfect live in your handbag balms, but they are very much a balm with like a, the teensiest amount of colour. So, you know, I can't really get that excited about these. They're fine. I don't find them super hydrating. I find them comfortable and they don't give me a lot of colour. So, you know, there's a time and a place for them if I want to look makeup free, if I just want to whack a bit of mascara, brows and balm on, I'm most likely probably to reach for one of these, but they give a lot less color and impact than a lot of the others that I'm gonna talk about today. These are probably like the most balm as opposed to lipstick. If we were doing a scale where, you know, Vaseline is here or Carmex is here and like a full opacity like lipstick with some hydration is here, these are like there. You hear me? So those, they're fine. They do what they say on the tin, but I, I'm not a huge big fan of them. I just think they're okay. And they just kind of do, you know, the thing that they do and it's fine. Another more sheer type of more, you know, over to this side on the scale type of formula is the newer Chanel balm. So these are the Rouge Coco balms, balms. And this is the shade Natural Charm. So more pigment, more coverage, more color than the NARS, but not by much. Again, these are, you know, expensive. They are Chanel at the end of the day. They live absolutely fine and happy in my handbag, but you can absolutely do better. They're not that exciting. They again are like basically a balm with a slight hint of color. Take the edge off if you just want to put something on the lips as opposed to having a naked, a nude lip, <laughs> imagine. But again, very, like underwhelming, just fine for me. Like, yes, they're kind of balmy and they're like comfortable to wear and they give me a hint of something, but I'm not excited about it. I haven't wanted to buy any more colors. They're just okay for me. By the way, I wasn't intending to like rank these, but I am kind of going through them in the sort of order from like the least to the most exciting, I guess, in some sort of way. But this is not an official ranking. I'm not prepared for that. Next, let's talk about these Charlotte Tilbury Hyaluronic Happy Kisses. Is that correct? So my number one issue with these is that the packaging and the design of the bullet is horrifying. It's horrible. It's awful. It's terrible. I don't know a single soul on this land who thinks this is a good idea other than presumably the person who came up with it. These have, listen, listen, hear it? They have a twist up mechanism, which I don't have an issue with that. Some of the others that we're gonna talk about today have a share a similar vibe, but they do not, see how you don't hear that? Twist back down. Who, who came up with that? Fire them they don't twist back down. So one, you have to be very careful as to how much you twist up because you're stuck with it then. So if there's too much, then it's gonna get all messy and smushed on the inside of the cap because you can't push it back down. So you either use it or lose it. 
that's for free. Now these are a lovely, lovely formula. They have sort of a medium opacity. As you can see, again, more color. So we're going up in kind of coverage and like the amount of opacity and the amount of pigment that we're getting. And these are also shinier, glossier than the two that I've spoken to about and these are also shinier, like glossier than the two I've spoken about previously, the NARS and the Chanel. These are a bit shinier. I love the feel of these on the lips. I think they look beautiful and it's such a shame because one, they're quite tricky to apply because you can't wind them up as much as you'd want to, to be able to use them because then you can't wind it back down. It's ridiculous and it's all messy around the bullet. I'm sure you can probably see all covered in the product. And yeah, so the packaging massively lets these down. The formula themselves, very, very nice, although it's a very limited shade offering. I can't love them anymore just because the pra it's not just a case of I don't like the look of the packaging because the packaging does look feel cheap and they're not they're Charlotte Tilbury they're a decent price point but they do look and feel very very light and very like flimsy like you drop it and it's going to smash into smithereens and just the functionality of it is a disaster it's very hard to apply them precisely and they have a fair amount of pigment so it's tricky. The whole process is tricky, but I actually really love the formula. So it's disappointing. It's disappointing is what it is. So I just had to tweak my settings because the light, the sunlight has arrived finally. And suddenly it was very, very bright. So yes, yeah, so far we have the NARS, the Chanel and the Charlotte Tilbury. Next, I'm gonna talk about one that I really enjoyed for a long time until some of these others came along. My favorite probably so far that I've mentioned, and it is the Fenty Slip Shines. They twist up, they twist back down. What a treat, genius. These kind of vary in how much pigment they have. So this one is Cookies and Cocoa. And as you can see, it's not a huge amount of pigment. It's kind of along the lines of the Chanel. And these very much are, again, like a tinted balm. They do kind of vary. You can get some of the colors that have like more coverage, more opacity, more color. But um, these are kind of my go-to every day, the Cookies and Cocoa. It's a very nice, very easy, to whack in your handbag and apply without a mirror. I like the shape and the size of the bullet is very easy to apply without having to look what you're doing, which is ideal for these types of lipsticks that you wanna reapply on the go because none of them are gonna be super long wearing. These type of lipsticks, they're not going to be like a liquid lipstick or a matte lipstick as far as how they wear. They are going to wear off faster than lots of other types of formulas and finishes. It's just the nature of the product. So you are gonna want to reapply quite a lot throughout the day if you're going out and about. And that's what I love about these. Very easy to use, light and a nice size for like a clutch or a little handbag, they're ideal. And they give you a nice, shiny, but not super glossy, definitely less shiny than the Charlotte Tilbury. I certainly prefer the formula of the Charlotte Tilbury, but the functionality of the Fenty means that I'm more likely to take these with me than face the mess that is going to be the Charlotte Tilbury. Now, talking of Charlotte Tilbury, let's talk about her superstar lips. One of, well, these were my absolute favorites in this category for years. My absolute favorite lipsticks in general, in fact, for a, like a very long time. I love everything about these. I love the amount of color. I love the pigment. I love that these are so thin and like perfect for your handbag. I like this packaging. It's nice and light and small and convenient. And because of the really small like oval bullet, very easy again to apply and not make a mess and just get your lips and give you quite a good defined edge. So this is it down here. This is Happy Kiss. They have a decent amount of pigment you know certainly in line with the hyaluronic hydrokiss and more than any of these others that we've already talked about and they have a lovely beautiful shiny finish and like a medium opacity which i love they also had some of my absolute favorite colors ever in lipsticks and did you notice there that i used the word had past tense and this is the thing with these they just don't stick around all of the best shades have been discontinued they're gone forever can't ever get them you know the odd shade comes back into stock and then it's like gone again they're just impossible to get which is very frustrating because they're an amazing 
formula and I absolutely love it. My favorite is Happy Lips, which is the shade I've just shown you and it just hasn't been available for like forever. And I also love Glow Kiss, which was one of the newer shades and again has like been unavailable really ever since it came out. So that is a frustration with these lips. I don't even know, are they permanent? Are they limited edition? Because they just never seem to be available or many shades of them never seem to be available, but it is an excellent formula if you can get hold of them. Next up, let's talk about these Lisa Eldridge Gloss Embraces. Now these are obviously a gloss you might have guessed from the name, but they are like a gloss balm hybrid. That's kind of how Lisa describes these. So that's why I'm including them today. And they do have lots of similarities. They have a huge amount of pigment for a gloss but they certainly aren't lacking for pigment, even like in this sort of lipstick category, probably the most, well definitely actually the most opacity that we've had so far. This is my favorite shade, it's Dragon, and I just find it so unique because it's a beautiful sort of orange peachy, shade that is quite hard to find in a gloss. Obviously this being a gloss, it's shinier than like all of the others that I've spoken about, but it doesn't feel sticky or heavy. It's a nice light, balmy formula. It actually feels like a lip mask. That's how it feels on the lips. If you've ever used the Nalej lip sleeping mask, this feels exactly like that. It's very comfortable and hydrating and nourishing on the lips and it's just a pleasure to wear. I love these. I love that there's some really unique shades in here and I love wearing these on their own. They don't need a lipstick underneath. They have enough color. I mean, as you can see, they have like the most color of any of that we've spoken about so far by quite some way. Lovely pigment for a gloss, but super comfortable and wearable and beautiful, unique colors from this gloss. I just absolutely love these. So next, a newer formula, and this is one of the Sisley Phyto Rouge Shine Lip Balms. These are really, really nice. They kind of got a little bit left out because I purchased this around these around the same time as I purchased the YSL Candy Glazes and the Dior, which I do prefer. So these just kind of got a bit neglected because these are more balmy and a bit sheerer. They certainly have pigment, as you can see. This is the shade 12, Sheer Cocoa. Some of these have a lot of pigment. They're not sheer by any means, but they just aren't as incredible to me or as exciting as some of the others that I'm left to talk about to the end. These are a lovely, let me show you closer up for goodness sake. Running out of space on the old hand, but here you can see again, certainly more opaque than any of the others we've spoken about, more pigment, more color. But these do have like quite a typical and more traditional feel and finish for a sort of tinted balm product. They're not as glossy, shiny as the Lisa Eldridge Gloss or the Charlotte Tilbury Superstar lips. And they're not as glossy and shiny as the Hyaluronic Hydra Kiss either. They're kind of more along the lines of some of these others like the Fenty and the Nars and the Chanel. They're more balm than they are gloss or sh high shine, which I like and appreciate and there's a time and a place for it, but I typically prefer a really high shine, glossy, juicy finish over like more of a balmy kind of finish. So I love the packaging of these. They're very convenient. I think they have nice, good, more varied shade range, but I don't necessarily think they're worth like the extra money in comparison to some of these others. So now we're getting like to the real nitty gritty of like the best of the best of these formulas. First up, we're gonna talk about the Candy Glaze formula from YSL. This like started this run of like success for me because these were like the first ones that I really got excited about because they were something different. Now again, you can hear these have this twist up clicking mechanism, but they twist back down. They twist back down. Do you hear me, Charlotte Tilbury? This is what we need. Very similar sort of shape and size and everything to the bullet, but just so high shine, glossy. These have the appearance of a lipstick with a gloss over the top, which is literally what I crave in life. I don't wanna have to do a lipstick and then a gloss on top. I don't want to have to do that. This gives me that, exactly that look and finish and coverage and opacity in one. I think these are amazing. The only drawback to these really, there's a couple of slight things I would like to tweak if given 
the opportunity. One, I do find the size and shape of the bullet slightly tricky to get like a precise edge. These have a lot of opacity to them. And so therefore you need to be quite precise so you don't make a mess. And it's trickier with these than some of the others I've spoken about. The second thing is that I wish this color band here that is pink on all of them in some way reflected the product inside, like a lot of the YSL lipsticks, because these, I have like six of these and I have to look at the end to see which color I'm using each time. It would be really good if these were the color in here and this band reflected the color of the product inside. That's just a minor thing. The other thing is there just aren't that many colors and differences between the colors as there are in say the Dior Addict, like they just, I wish it had a wider range of options because I think it's stunning formula and the finish is probably my favorite maybe out of all of these because it's just the shiniest. Here is a close up there. I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see, but it's, it's like a medium opacity, absolutely easily straight off the bat. And it's just extra, extra shiny and glossy. And it is quite creamy as well. Very nice on the lips. Now my newest entry into these types of lipsticks was the Chanel Rouge Cocoa Bloom. So I picked these up on recommendation from Erin Nicole because she was talking about how these are her favorite formula. And so I had to try them. I wanted to purchase a few, but typical for Chanel, there were very few options that weren't just red. Typically with Chanel, they're all of their lipsticks, they have like a range of 20 and 18 of them will be red. And not just like different reds, but basically the same red 20 times. Like I feel like they're always so similar. Everything looks the exact same. I found it very hard to choose these online. So I just picked a couple, didn't really know what they were gonna look like. Very hard to tell from swatches online, but they all just look the same. That being said, I like the packaging. I like that it has the clear top so that you can actually see which one's which when you look at them inside. So there you go. We have 110 and 130 and like you, you can see the difference inside. Through that clear cap, which just makes it really, really helpful when you're trying to grab one of the shades quickly. I love the shape and size of the bullet, have no issues. It's a classic twist up mechanism. And these are a lovely formula. They have a lot of coverage, like opacity off the bat, straight out the gate. You don't have to do a million passes to try and build it up. So here she is down here, this is 110. And these are, this is the candy glaze over here. So you can see the comparison. This definitely has like a smoother, more even, texture to it and they are a bit thicker. They feel lovely on the lips. They give a great amount of color and pigment, but they do feel very hydrating and comfortable and thin and balm-like on the lips. So I just feel like the finish and the coverage is not really balm like they, they're shinier and they look more substantial, but actually the feel of them is, is light and very comfortable like a balm. So these were really a hit for me, but the biggest miss is just that there were just no other colors really that I feel like I want or need because they all just look the same, which is a typical issue for me when it comes to Chanel as a brand. And I have left the best for last, my absolute favorites in this category, the favorite like lipsticks, probably of all time. And it's the YSL Addict Hydrating Shine Lipsticks. I now have like 15 of these. I keep buying more and I can't see any end to this happening because they have a huge number of shades, but within that number of shades, there is an incredible variety. There are pinks, corals, peaches, oranges, multiple nudes with different different depths. There are fuchsias, there are berry tones, there's something for everybody. And that's why I want so many of them because there's just so many different options and the formula is absolutely per perfection and not just the formula everything about these I love I love these cases even though you do have to pay more for the extra special cases but I love how the component fits in I love the feel of them I love the weight I love that they have the names written on the bullet I love the twist up I love the size and shape of the bullet it makes it very easy to apply the smell is joyous like one of the best things I've ever smelled in my life 
okay. And I like to smell things. I smell a lot of stuff. Where are we going to put you? Here, let's put it here. These have like a medium opacity, I'd say like straight off the bat, but they are buildable and you can absolutely build them to being fully opaque. The special, there's two special things about these which make them my favorites. Well, three when you think about the variety of shades on offer. The second thing is this finish. It's so smooth and shiny and creamy. <laughs> so here she is there. You can just see how shiny she is when it catches the light. Just such a shiny but smooth formula. Perhaps a little less pigment than the Chanel. Perhaps very close. The Chanel and the Dior are quite similar as far as how they look on the lips. The Chanel and the Dior are quite similar. That's the first thing I thought when I applied the Chanel is that, oh yeah, it does remind me of the Dior. Lots of people ask me to try these and my thoughts on these and the comparisons and they are similar as to how they look and how they apply and everything. But the Dior feels nicer to me on the lips. It feels nicer and I prefer the finish. It's creamier and like more substantial on the lips and the Chanel feels thinner and lighter and like it won't wear as well. So I just like prefer the feel and the finish of the Dior. They are quite close and similar. The Dior is just more special and has way more options when it comes to colors to choose from. So for me, the Dior is the winner all the way. If you want to see the vast majority of the Dior shades that I picked up, I do have a lip swatch video. I've picked up, I think four or five more shades since that lip swatch video. And I love them all. There's not a dud. The consistency of the formula is absolutely perfect across all of the shades I've tried, of which there are many, many, many. And now actually my newest shade is one of the glitter formulas. So there are two different finishes. There's glitter or there's shine and all of the shades I chose in my lip swatch video of the Dior were shine and I didn't fancy the glitters. I've since picked up the beige oblique shade that I'm wearing today which is a glitter and I like it just as much. I think maybe the shine just edges it slightly maybe just because I'm the shiny glossy finish for me. Juicy juicy lips, love it but this is has all the same things going for it, all the same opacity, feel, texture, everything as the gloss. So you can't really go wrong. It's just about what colors you're drawn to, of which I'm like literally drawn to every one of the colors, all of the colors, in fact. So there you have it. That is a rundown of all of these types of lipsticks that I own. These balmy, luscious, juicy lip formulas. These are like just the creme de la creme of the ones that I have tried in my collection. Please let me know what your favorites are down below. I get asked about the Shantakai ones all the time, but they're the only ones that I have never tried. So I can't tell you about those. I haven't tried them. Um, so yeah, that's why these they aren't featured in this video. I haven't tried those yet, but uh, they are on my list possibly if a shade comes out that I'm kind of drawn to to try. But yeah, the Dior cannot go wrong. The Chanel, if you can find a color that you want, you can't go wrong. All of these are great formulas, but they do have differences between them and pros and cons. And hopefully I've kind of helped you out with that today. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye.